Okay. Hello. Welcome to our Zoom production and celebration of International Women's Day, presented by the Cape Cod branch of the Women's International League for Peace and Freedom, or WILF. I'm Candace Perry from Wellfleet, and I'll be joined by a wonderful group of peace and justice activists. In non-COVID times, WILF has sponsored a March 8th celebration of International Women's Day at the Cultural Center of Cape Cod. Tonight, we are observing International Women's Day and recording from our homes and making this recording widely available. One of our WILF members, Alicia Long River Davis, has helped us celebrate in the past by singing her poetry about peace. But tonight, because she's not well, we who are Alicia's friends will be reading from her wonderful collections of indigenous wisdom. When I asked Alicia how she'd like to be introduced, she sent me the following. My bio is long, interesting, I suppose, and very complicated for sure, but it really is of no importance to me if, if people know me or about me. My main purpose in all that I do is to share messages and plant simple but meaningful seeds of peace, peaceful ways I have always lived by. That is who I am, nothing more. It's my privilege to read the opening prayer from her book, Open Our Hearts, by my sister, Alicia, and while sharing this photograph of her. Open our hearts to peace and healing between all people. Open our hearts to protect and provide for all children of the earth. Open our hearts to respect the earth and all gifts of the earth. Open our hearts to end exclusion violence and fear among all. I am thankful for the gifts of this day and every day. Thank you. And now, Elenita Munez. International Women's Day has always been important to us in our branch. As Candace said, we celebrate every year. In many countries around the world, today is a special celebration with flowers and candy presented to women by the men in their lives and with community parades honoring women. Here in the United States, we celebrate more modestly perhaps and maybe more on our own, but we celebrate and we in Massachusetts can claim a special connection to International Women's Day because the strike in 1834 by women working in the cotton mills of Lowell, Massachusetts is one of three events commemorated by the establishment of International Women's Day. The date of March 8th was chosen specifically to honor women garment workers who demanded equal rights, a 10 hour work day, and an end to child labor in two other demonstrations in 1857 and 1908. Herewith, a couple of important March 8th dates to remember. In 1834, the Lowell Mill Workers strike to protest wage cuts, proclaiming union is power. On March 8th, 1857, women garment workers strike for the 10 hour workday and equal rights for women. On March 8, 1908, the needle trade workers strike for an end to sweatshops and an end to child labor. In 1910, at the Second International Socialist Party Congress, Clara Zetkin called for the establishment of International Women's Day to honor all working women to be held on March 8, to commemorate the US women garment workers strikes in 1857 and 1908. And on March 8, 1911, the first International Women's Day was observed in Austria, Denmark, Germany, and Switzerland. Sadly, March 25, 1911, the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire killed 146 women ages 13 to 25, because the doors to the factory had been locked 
to prevent walkouts and actions. One employer in the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire was fined $20. He's the only employer sanctioned for the locked doors. International Women's Day continues today and is celebrated more and more. Even President Biden has acknowledged International Women's Day, which is lovely. And we are pleased to be able to celebrate with you and to honor Alicia. The piece I'm going to read by Alicia is one of her Provincetown shorts. These are stories that she wrote in the early 90s after she moved up to Provincetown. And this one is called The Kite. At the foot of Ryder Street on Fisherman's Wharf, there is a shop specializing in kites. This day is somewhat overcast with a breeze and a little chill in the air for mid-May. Floating high above the beach, there is a red triple triangle kite with a tail of yellow streamers, tugging at the string, holding it aloft as it floats and soars against the pane's gray background of the sky. The red and yellow colors against the gray are quite visual, almost like when a director makes a black and white movie and then all of a sudden highlights one person or object in color. The string of the kite is tied to an overturned boat on the beach. I suppose it is a marketing device for the kite shop. The kite pulls and struggles, creating tension along the length of the string, trying to break away from the string, to soar by its own will, to follow its own path, free and unrestricted. It doesn't know the string gives the kite its center and life, and without the string, the kite would crash or be mangled in telephone wires or torn apart by the fingers of tree branches waiting to grab hold of it and strangle it, jealous of its flight of freedom, while the tree must remain rooted in one spot, sometimes for centuries. Or Maybe the kite does know these dangers, but would rather have three minutes of its own freedom to go where it may, rather than spending a summer season being tied and restricted by where it can go or what is allowed by a string who has no idea of what it is like to be a kite. I'm Jan Hively, and uh, I'm from uh, Yarmouth on Cape Cod, and um, I'm going to take us through the next section. Um, through the remainder of the program, we'll be reading snippets from Open Our Hearts, a book that combines stories from Alicia Davis with activities developed by Alicia and by Dear Sullivan from the uh, Unitarian Church of Barnstable. The publication was prepared for youth groups with a grant from the International Unitarian Universalist Association to the Unitarian Church of Barnstable. It has been distributed thanks to Alicia's perseverance to over 1,000 groups around the U.S. Open Our Hearts is one of 19 books written by First Americans that Alicia has donated for this library shelf of indigenous wisdom located in the Unitarian Church of Barnstable. Alicia's mother was from the Micmac tribe in New Brunswick. Alicia's own story about living with first American tribes across the country is described in her book on the shelf that's titled Walking Turtle Island from Cape Cod to Hopi Land. Arizona, an amazing mystical journey. Her most recent publication is also on the shelf, titled Seeds of Peace, 
writings of peaceful living for sharing with all. I will start the brief readings from Open Our Hearts by reading many names, many ways. It shows how all voices must be respected. Many names, many ways. Grandmother, why do some people pray to God, some to the creator and other to other God, goals or to other gods? How many gods are there? Young one, if a group of people look at a tree, some may say it's tall, some may say it's green, some may say it's old with age, and still others will regard the shape of its leaves. All are looking at the same tree, but each sees it differently, describes it differently, and it feels differently to each. Each person sees the tree in the way that's meaningful for them. So is it that people who pray, pray to the same one for all the same reasons, but in ways they feel is right for them, in whatever way feels special and connects for them. You call me one way and your brother calls me in a way that feels right for him. I do not love either of you more or less by what you call me. One way is no better than any other if done with respect and love. It's what's in your heart and what's in your thoughts, words and deeds that's important, not what name is called to the one we pray to. It's nothing to be mad or fight about. So there we have God, goddess, father, mother, creator, great spirit, great mystery, Jesus, Allah, Yahweh, Buddha, there are many names the one is called by and prayed to as one creator, one earth, one people. Respect our diversity and rejoice in unity. So as we go on here through our program, we're going to hear from a number of people. Next uh, will be Margie Mart. Uh, and uh, she will be uh, uh, reading All Have Gifts, All Are Special. And then we have Paula Schnepp, who will be reading Cycles. And we have Chris Morin, who will be reading Wildflowers. Diane Ashley will read A Place for All. Uh, and uh, Donna Peel will be reading The Path of Peace. We ho our hope that Irina Costarina will join us with her two children who are planning to read Interesting Differences. And then Donna is going to, read, to sing, which will be a joy for all. Margie, will you go ahead? Hi, I'm Margie and I live in South Dennis and I'm part of the Cape Cod Wolf Branch. All have gifts. Eagles can powerfully fly high above the clouds. Eagle can screech but cannot sing beautiful songs like smaller birds who cannot fly as high. Peacock has a beautiful tail but no beautiful song. Butterfly is delicate but starts out as a slow lumpy crawler. Fish has no legs, but swims in grace through rivers and oceans. Owl can fly swiftly through the darkness of night. Fly has eyes to see up and down and all around. Ant is tiny, but has great strength to move things much larger than itself. Some people can run far. Other people can paint pictures or play musical instruments, write poetry, make scientific discoveries, treat illness, nurture others or teach others. Some understand the deepness of numbers and formulas. 
Some understand the deepness of people. Some understand the languages of other people. Some know the languages of animals or the winds and skies. Some understand the language of machines, wire, wood, or pipe. Everyone can do something, but no one can do everything. Do not despair over what cannot be done. Be thankful for what we each have, a gift to do. We each have gifts that we and no others have. Appreciate and respect the gifts we each bring to share with the world. Good evening, I'm Paula from Marsons Mills and I'm going to be reading Cycles. The sun and rain nourish the earth. The earth nourishes roots. The roots nourish green grass, trees and plants. The green people nourish the air with oxygen. The air rises with the winds to nourish clouds. To once again become rain, nourishing the earth. The cycles of life back to rebirth to renewal. The spirit of the plant becomes one with the rabbit. The spirit of the fallen rabbit becomes one with the wolf. The spirit of the fallen wolf becomes one with the earth. The spirit of the earth becomes one with the plant. The cycle of nature's death back to rebirth to renewal. Life, death, life, the cycles go on, beginning to end to new beginning. Nothing lives forever. Nothing ever dies. The earth is one with the cloud. The rabbit is one with the wolf. The wolf is one with the plant. We are one with the plants and animals. There is nothing on earth that is new. Everything that is here has always been. Televisions were once rocks, minerals, and sand that came from other composition, transition of elements. Dinosaurs, knights, armor, castle walls, covered wagons are all still here as something else. Everything is one, one is part of everything. Hi, I'm Chris Morin from Yarmouth. Wildflowers. A rainbow of wildflowers, each delicate in her own beauty, each graceful in the moment of her dance. But beyond her wind dance of race, beneath the beauty of her face, is her strength deep within her roots. She pulls food from the depths of the earth and drinks from water from the pond. She stands to the, aggress the aggression of the fire sun and bends to the powerful winds of storms, standing upright as they pass. She conceals herself under the blanket of heavy winter snowfalls, then lifts herself up through the earth of spring showers. For she is wildflower, beautiful, delicate, resilient, and strong. Good evening. I'm Diane Ashley from East Ham. And I was once present 
with Alicia at the WOMR Poetry Contest and Alicia won first place that year. So she is, she is an honored poet. This is her poem, A Place for All. Butterflies of rainbows, fields of wildflowers, rivers flowing wild and free, trees standing proud and tall, bears eating blackberries, life giving life to all, whales crashing with great flare, dolphins grinning fun smiles, hawk and eagle flying high in the air, mustangs running prairies until out of sight, fish jumping waves through diamond sunlight, Owls flying swiftly through the dark night. Each deserves a space. Each deserves a place. Those of fin, web, wing, and fur. The two-legged of human, him, and her. There is room enough for all to share. If we are wise, living, with peace and care. Thank you. I think it's me. <clears throat> so I'm Donna Peel from Harwich. And I'm reading from a small book called Feelings of the Spirit. It's a Pathfinder book <clears throat> written by Long River. And in the explanation of her of the authorship of this little book. She says, who I am or was has no importance. The messages to share have importance, not the messenger. I am neither the light nor the message, but just a river. For messages to flow from one source to another, I use the identity of Pathfinder as we are all pathfinders for ourselves or others. I've chosen this poem called The Path of Peace. By feeling satisfied with what I have, I feel no envy. By giving freely to those who would take, I feel no anger. By understanding the fears of others, I feel no hate. By accepting the differences of others, I feel no judgment. By recognizing the specialness of all, I feel no self-importance. By seeing the wonders of Mother Earth, I feel humble. By knowing all that I can do, I feel my worth. By knowing what I cannot do, I feel humility. By these feelings, I walk the path of peace. <clears throat> And so this is the poem creator, Open Our Hearts, that was recorded by the Augsburg Choral Society. Creator, open our hearts to peace 
peace and healing between all people. Creator, open our hearts to provide and protect all the children of the earth. Creator, open our hearts to respect for the earth and all the gifts of us. Creator, open our hearts to end exclusion, violence, and fear among Thank you for the gifts of the day and every day. Wow. <laughs> if everybody, if Zoom allowed all the sound, we could hear all of us clapping loudly. That was oh, beautiful, good. Donna. Beautiful, oh, beautiful. Um, thank you to all the readers. Thank you to whoever's out there watching these recordings and helping us celebrate International Women's Day. Um, we wanted to mention that in addition to this recording, there are going to be PDFs of Alicia's work for both Open Our Hearts and Seeds of Peace, and they'll be available for download through the Unitarian Church of Barnstable's website, that's barnstableuu.org, and also through Cape Cod Wilf's Facebook page. If you go to Facebook and search Cape Cod Wilf, W-I-L-F. Um, so thank you all for being with us. Yes, it's a Wilf hat. Um, and if you wanna know more about our organization, check us out on Facebook. Um, any parting words from anybody? Thank you for Alicia. Thank you for Alicia. Thank you for Alicia. Thank you. Thank you all. And we wish you all well. Peace. Peace. Peace.